evening, sir. I'm Jiawei. Today, our group title is Smart Contact Tracing System. So, now I will present the background of contact tracing. Contact tracing has been used to control cache and virus for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Getting back to the robotic cache, it is based on an army of human operators tasked with identifying and isolating anyone close to an infected individual. So, the manual tracing is successful, but it is time consuming. Manual tracing alone might be too slow for some case, commonly dealing with super spreaders. Contact tracing app identify and inform anyone who has come into contact with someone who tests positive for the virus using location data, has acquired automatically from mobile device, app capacity to automatically identify and notify at risk person out of form manual approach based on interviews and phone calls. In Malaysia, everyone uses the Messenger Direct app for check-in but reach a location. So, for the history of contact tracing, contact tracing isn't a new concept and it has evolved during the last two centuries, but that is historical evidence for previous attempts to trace disease. According to the oldest recorded evidence from the medieval period, individuals who had the cage were isolated, but their residents were also marked. A symbol or a marker was placed to alert everyone that a particular house should be avoided. These flags were an early attempt to restrict local outbreaks by alerting an individual in the vicinity of an infected person to need avoid contact. So after that, I will present now I will present the future trend of contact tracing. A responsive competent contact tracing is a technology that can be looked forward in the future. So there is few steps we can use for faster contact tracing. Okay. The first is identifying who a patient recently met. The official can currently require to interview patients and attempt to use additional data, such as CCTV footage from location they visited. The official must rely on clues such as patient clothing or the entryway via which they enter a building to locate the patient among the crowds. So besides that, content tracers must agree information from a variety of sources, the national identification number, mobile number, email number, which is a unique serial number. Tended to all, all mobile phones, various social platform handles, biometrics such as facial features and gift, ride sharing apps and e-payments can all be used to record a patient digital activity into networks. So a graph database can also assist in automating the identifying procedure. It can easily read set up a patient network for relationships through their journey, referring at risk clusters and aiding in the understanding for the virus transmission. Okay, so that's all for my class. Now I would like to pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Lee Kaiwei and I will present the problem statement of uh, the smart contact tracing system. So the current uh, contact tracing system is MySajatura and the first problem we have is it is not fast enough because uh, user need to scan the QR code and then authenticate himself to the reset receipt of patients. Hence, in a crowded area, only one QR code is available and therefore user need to line up and scan the QR code one by one. Second, it is not convenient. User need to scan every QR code they receive in a mall and in a location with high exposure to sunlight, QR code might not be visible enough for the user to scan, making them scan multiple times. Uh, the third one is uh, shop owner don't have uh, data transparency. If everyone checking in to a shop, the data collected is not transferred to the shop owner, so the shop owner can't see the user activity. And now I'll present the objective and proposed solution for this assignment. The first objective is to develop a smartphone app to help users to check in quickly with Bluetooth technologies. The user phone will scan for the shop Bluetooth signal to check in automatically. The second one is to allow users to check in seamlessly without taking their phone out when checking into a shop. The user just need to open the background app to check in. The third one is to save, visualize, and analyze the user activity in each shop. The time frame of each user check in will be saved, and the shop owner can allocate more resources when the user activity is the highest. But now I will present the proposed solution. The proposed solution is to create a smart tracing system that will use AWS Cloud Service. Each shop will install a Bluetooth Low Energy Beacon to broadcast the Bluetooth signal 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The signal can be retrieved from the user's smartphone when they are within 1 meter of the checking locations. If the phone receives a Bluetooth signal, the user will be immediately checked in into a shop that matches the Bluetooth signal address from the AWS database. If the number of users in the business exceeds 10, a message will be issued to the shop owner, allowing them to manage the situation accordingly. So right now I will present the architecture diagram for the proposed solutions. So right here we have a beacons to send Bluetooth signal to the phone. The phone will connect to the internet and connect to the database gateway. So before that we have an Amazon Cognito to help users authenticate themselves or register new users. So when users authenticate, uh, we have a sign up triggers that create a user instance in the dynamic menu in the user table to store the username and the checking history. So we have a check-in function here. So when users check into a shop uh, with the MAC address provided by the beacons, so uh, they will check for the shop to see if it is exit 10 users or not, exit 10 users, 
the Amazon SNS will send an email or notifications to the shop owner to help them manage to uh, notify them on the maximum user experience. So the checkout function will remove one user's the username from the shop database, the store database. The app shop is for users that are interested to open the shop to, to allow users to check in to, to create a DynamoDB instance uh, in the DynamoDB. The edit shop is to modify the attribute of the shops for the owners. So we have uh, Amazon Athena here. So the, this Amazon Athena will uh, uh, take data from the DynamoDB. So it will be always ready to feed the data inside an Amazon Quick Site so the shop owner can like visualize the shop activities, like the check-in activity of these shops. Hi sir, my name is Honio and I will be presenting about the comparison of Amazon Web Service, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure in terms of their strength and weakness of their service. Now, first let's talk about Amazon Web Service AWS. For the strength of AWS, it is very cost-effective, cheap for long-term and very easy to learn as it provides very good documentation and it provides a very secure system with good security and provide very good scalability for our services. And for its weakness, it's only provided limited resources for certain regions. And it, it also provides a very expensive cost for short term. Next, we will talk about Google Cloud. For the, for the strength of Google Cloud, it provides fastest process among the three. And it also provides security maintenance on a day, on a monthly basis. And it also provides very good, very great integration with Google service, which stay in the Google ecosystem. But on the other hand, it also has this weakness, which is limited programming language choice and only able to integrate with a few services outside Google ecosystem. Next, this is Microsoft Azure. For the strength of Microsoft Azure, it is also provide very great integration with Microsoft service in Microsoft eco ecosystem. And it also provides high availability and scalability and also very good data security. For its weakness, it has a very complicated, complicated user interface and it also requires a very high cost for the usage of the product. And furthermore, it also lack of user documentation, which required, which every time when the user user use the product, it required the user to contact the user support most, most of the time. And this is the comparisons between the existing cloud technologies, which shows the difference between cloud storage, database, service computing, notifications, managing service, and analytics. Hi, my name is Tidy, and I'll be presenting my part done in this assignment, which is the configuration of Cognito, API Gateway, and two Lambda functions. First, I would like to introduce the Cognito user pool that I create. I create it by using the review default. And after creating it, I've added the app client to it. And this is the configuration that I made. This is the callback URL and sign URL. And by and this OAuth 2.0, we have I have selected the implicit grant to ensure I could get the token of the I can get the ID and access token of the register user. And let's try to launch the hosted UI. And after I sign in, so I could get the ID and access token from the URL. This is the access token of my account. Of my user, so I'll like to copy it for later we use. And I've added the domain name of our assignment project, which is the smart mice etc., and also the smart contact tracing system. After that, we look into the API gateway. So basically, this is the API gateway that I made, and this is the resource. And this we use the post method for both the add and update shop. And for the authorizer of the API gateway, we are using the Cognito user pool that we created just now. And we attach authorization into it, and with the also authorization scope of email. Both are the same. And so after that, we look into the lambda function that I created. And so the lambda function is added to the API gateway as well. They are both added to the add shop and upgrade shop. And so this is the add shop. So this lambda function accept the four user the query string parameters to add the shop record. And so this is the update shop function and it accepts four parameters as well. And all this shop record will be stored in the DynamoDB created by my teammates, the store DB. And now I would like to demonstrate my lambda function by using the postman. And this is the first add shop method. And this is the token access token of the cognito. And this is this will be the parameters that I want to add. So we refresh and see. So the shop is added. And now we will update it. And see, this is the primary key, so it will be same. And now this three parameter will be different. And now I update it. So it successfully updated. And refresh and see and so as well the parameter as you can see the parameters are successfully updated and that's all for my part i will pass to my teammates thank you right now we'll present about the sign up triggers so right here we have a pre-sign up triggers which we have a sign up triggers lambda functions so right here we go to the sign up, uh, sign up triggers functions so in this section we have a default pre-sign up triggers uh, code and here we have a dynamo db code and we can check if the username is not in the user tables then we create a user instance in the user table so right here we create the users right whatever we sign up then we get the code from the emails.
So after creating the users, so originally we don't have the dictionary tools in the user data. Then refreshing, then you can see there's a dictionary tool functions, functions usually in here. So right now I will explain the checking lambda functions. So here we have the function to extract the username from the access tokens. And here we have the function to extract the MAC address from the parameters. So here we check if the store the user is trying to check in is more than 10 before no. If yes, the user instance will be placed into a user table, history table, and stored in the table. So right now I will going to perform a demo for the for use. So after getting your access tokens, uh, you can put an access token in the table. Then parameters we are going to put MAC address we are interested in checking. And this is the checking function hosted by the database gateway. So when we try to send a request, so this is the sending request. So the checking, the message will be passed. So here. So the users is checking. So the history should be MAC address with a time frame. So this is the US time. So we just checking to the MAC address we are interested in. And for the store DB table, this is a short check-in. So here you can see there's a new user recovery tool in the shop right now. So as for the history table, this is history is used to generate the quick site. So this is the check-in in the history tables. This is used to provide quick site data. Right now I'm going to explain the checkout functions. So this function is the same, it's used to extract the username from the access token. This is a demo instance for store DB. So once the user check out, the username in the store DBs will be removed. So for example, right now we have recovery tool in the store DBs. Just now we check in. So right now we are going to check out from the store. So this is the experiment for the checkout link. Send. We send a request to check out. Sending request, so we return check out. So right now we're going to check uh, the dynamic DBs. So we can refresh. Let's see, recovery is removed. Now I will be presenting that a uh, SSS notification will be sent to short owner when users exceed the limit of 10. First, to set up Amazon SNS, we need to go to the topic and press create topic. And we need to memorize this to be inserted into the number function later. And we need to create a subscription to our email, set up an endpoint. And when we prompt the confirmation, the Amazon will send an email like this, and we need to press on the confirm subscription. Then it will be the status will be confirmed, and it's good, good to code. And Notice that this is the Dynamo, Dynamo DB of a short table. Then in the current users, for this case, it, only, it already contained 10 users. So an email, an email will be sent to the shop owner if any more user, any more user enter to this shop. This is done by by this code in the lambda, which will returns, which will which will returns this, which will return the message to the email. Now let's try it out in the postman. For the postman, for the postman, we need to set up the MAC address, which is the stop, which is the store, and insert the token ID and press send. See, uh, maximum widgets. And we now go to the chat, our email, and this is the email sent to the endpoint email. And if we remove one of the users, then we send again. It will, it will check in and it will show check in and it will not prompt the SNS notification. Now I will be presenting about the analysis of user data, which include the AWS DynamoDB, Amazon Antenna, and Amazon Critsight. First, in Amazon and Antenna, we need to go to a data source to create a data source which link to the DynamoDB. And inside this data source, we need to create a lambda functions to connect the DynamoDB and the and the antenna. Then we go here and select the data source we created and key in the query that we need to that we want and then we go to the quick site and press create data set and we use antenna and import the data source and create a data source from it select the table we want and edit the data from here we need to know that we need to change this data string to data format we need to change this to data format and key in key in the data format And update it. Then it will change to our desired data format and save and publish. And we go to the analysis and create an analysis from the data source, which is the data set we created just now. And from here, we can see that we can we can analyze the data that on much how many customer enter the shop per day. And to be more specific, we can query on the number of customer count on a specific page. This by doing this, we can give the shop owner a uh, and notice of 
which time has the most time customer can do the SOP people. 